I'm Maggie Williams, editor of Engaged Investor and Pensions Insight magazines. I'm here with Nick Flint, chief executive of Club Vita and one of our 50 most influential people in pensions. So Nick, we've seen pension schemes longevity calculations revolutionised over the last few years through a combination of more realistic longevity data and greater awareness of increasing life expectancy. But is the worst now over in terms of the changes to calculations that schemes need to make? Well, I'd like to think that that was the case, but there are still a considerable number of schemes that maybe are looking back uh, too far into the dark ages when it comes to looking at longevity. Uh, if you look at what's been happening recently, uh, say in the last 10 years, um, the increases to longevity have taken many by surprise, even though we entered the millennium expecting that increases uh, to life expectancy were going to be maintained. The, what we've actually seen has been uh, greater increases uh, than even were anticipated 10 years ago. And what that's meaning is that uh, for many schemes, they are um, starting to tackle uh, the risk of longevity as one of their key risks that the pension scheme faces. But for many others, it's still being seen as something that can be left uh, for, the, uh, for the scheme actuary to decide and not really owning it themselves. Uh, so yes, there have been some step improvements to the way that many schemes are looking at longevity, but there are still many others that are tailing behind. Uh, and my worry is, is that those that uh, have not yet caught up to the new methods of looking at longevity um, may well have some rather unhealthy surprises in years to come. And how should schemes best handle their longevity risks? Are longevity hedges the only way or the best answer, or are there other ways around this? Longevity is a risk uh, like any other risk, and there are many different ways that uh, it, it, it can be handled. Um, for some schemes, the most appropriate um, uh, way of dealing with the risk is, is to transfer the risk away from the scheme. Uh, and there have been some notable examples of schemes that have done that, for example, Babcock. Um, uh, for others, a more traditional buy-in route um, would be the best way of going. And uh, for others, transferring the risk to members uh, is also an option to explore. And BAE Systems are, are a scheme that have recently successfully done that. Um, but Transferring the risk is only one option, and of course there are other options such as um, making sure that you're not accruing more risk in the scheme, and so a lot of schemes are now closed to future accrual, um, for example rent a kill um, And uh, for, ev for other schemes, um, monitoring the risk is seen as the most appropriate step to take. And in monitoring the risk, what a scheme is doing is they're basically playing a watching brief to see what is actually happening with life expectancy trends uh, and also to get very valuable data about the makeup of their scheme and what the actual risk is that they're holding. Uh, maybe a stepping stone um, to a future transaction. Um, but finally, there, there are those schemes that um, holding onto the risk is also the most acceptable um, way of dealing with the risk. And whichever route a scheme chooses to take, the foundation of the decision is based on the most accurate and most up-to-date understanding of the longevity risk that the individual scheme itself is holding, uh, which is the basis of any sound decision-making process uh, for the risks within the scheme. And what are some of the trends that Club Vita has seen in longevity data over the course of the last two years? Well, of course, longevity uh, and life expectancy are increasing um, at an ever-increasing rate. Um, for example, in the last decade, uh, we've seen rates of life expectancy increase by nearly three years. Um, that is actually uh, an accelerated rate, even compared to what we were expecting back at the start of the decade. But the other thing that Club Vita is finding is that um, for those uh, people among schemes that currently have the, the, the greatest life expectancy, that, so these would be the healthy, wealthy um, population, uh, rates of uh, life expectancy are increasing at ever increasing rates. And in fact, the gap between the healthy and uh, the, the, the wealthy and the, the, the poorer and maybe the less um, healthy lifestyles uh, the gap is extenuating and increasing even more. And this is very important for schemes um, to understand before they take any major decisions on, on the longevity risk that they're holding. For example, um, a scheme that maybe was um, uh, based, uh, a manufacturing scheme, maybe there's um, factory workers, 
Um, and, and typically they would expect that the majority of, um, of the liabilities in the scheme are held by maybe slightly less affluent people, maybe people who have led more of a manual um, working life. Um, but of course, a lot of schemes are finding that uh, there's a concentration of risk, and the concentration of risk is not in um, the, the less affluent people, it's in the more wealthy, maybe the management um, within the organisation. Uh, and that extreme of, um, of concentration is something that the schemes themselves have to understand before they embark on any particular transaction with the risk. And what can we learn from this for the future? Well, there are lots of lessons uh, for, for schemes to learn uh, and also the advisors of schemes to learn. And I, I guess the, the, the one that's at the forefront of my mind is an absolute understanding of the profile of the membership within the scheme is paramount. Uh, paramount before uh, the scheme embarks on any, any decision making um, regarding the longevity risk that it's holding. Uh, seeking the best um, information um, that relates to the profile of the, of the scheme uh, and making sure that um, those lessons of the past are learnt by schemes and they take ownership of the risk and they don't leave it uh, for their advisors maybe to, um, to, 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 to make the tough decisions around it. So I would say the lessons um, that are coming out of the work that we're doing within Club Vita are very much that schemes are starting to take ownership of the risk, they're starting to understand the nature of the risk that they're holding and therefore they're better um, able to make those informed decisions uh, and make sure that uh, some of the mistakes of, of, of the past in terms of the decision making are not repeated in the future. Nick, many thanks for your time today. That's been great today. Thank you. Thanks very much. I look forward to seeing you for the next video in our series soon.